We're here today with uh, Aiden. Uh, Aiden, my name is Mohammed. So uh, nice to meet you. Uh, most brought you to the park today. Um, I've been here the last few weeks. So yeah, so I've just been getting to indulge in different conversations and things like that. So, yeah. Could you tell us a bit about your background in terms of beliefs? Um, so I was raised non um, non religious uh, background. I'd say I got interested like in religion maybe when I was like. 13, 14. I'm really, How old are you now? I'm uh, 19 now. Oh, 19. you're a young man. Yeah, still young, yeah, yeah. I might look a bit older, but yeah, I'm just young. But, um... Yeah, and so since then, like I've just kind of been uh, interested in discovering like different religious values. I'm really interested in my like, history and that sort of thing. So I've been like that kind of I would say that kind of pushed me towards learning more about religion. Is there anything that stood out for you in certain beliefs that you've uh, um, stood out? Um, I don't know if anything's like just for me to understand out. what kind of taste you know. Okay, if you like chocolate or strawberry or right. something, you have to right. right. Um, well, yeah, as I was saying, just earlier before, um, essentially I'd be looking, at, my ideal type of religion would be a religion that hasn't sort of um, ascended through, like, culture. And that's why I was asking, if, if I was to become a Muslim, would I be Arabizing my, my identity? I can answer you that with me as a person as well. Okay. Um, I'm born and bred in London. Right. My father is Arabic, but my right. mother's from Yorkshire. Right, okay. So, you're from North, aren't you? You've got a bit of a Northern twine. You've got some kind nah. of accent going on. Uh, well, you're well, not from London, are you? No, nah, I'm not. I'm yeah. from, I was born in, I was born in Southampton. I lived up north most of my life. Right. And now, and then I, then I moved See, to See, I, I heard there was a little bit of a twang in your accent. Right, yeah, it's a mixed accent, yeah. It's a mixed accent. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you that this is actually where my mum's actually from. She's actually got this right. kind of accent. Yeah, yeah, so we're, yeah, yeah. we're far off London, mate. We're far off London. We're not London lads down here. But yeah. Right. So, um, my mum's a Reva. So, you know, she's basically someone that grew up as a Christian. Right, okay. She accepted Islam about 30 years ago and became a Muslim. Right, yeah. So, I mean, I'm someone to testify. I'm, I'm basically. I'm, I'm offspring of a, of a reader as well myself, right, okay. basically. Um, yeah. Is there, so I mean, and I do, I do like your question, you know, it's definitely, it makes a lot of sense that you wouldn't want a religion to be Arabized or right, yeah. any kind of thing, because then it wouldn't be like a mercy to mankind, it wouldn't be like a religion for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like for example, Jesus in the Bible, he claims to apparently only come down for the, for the lost sheep of Israel, right. as he says. Yeah. Um, it's not that we refute that, we don't refute that. We right, believe yeah. that Jesus came down for his people, Moses came down for his people. Right. Sorry? Um, do you know anything about Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him? Yeah, I know a bit. No, no, that's no, I know that he, like, um, um, is an angel in Gabriel. Yeah, he came down there. Um, I don't know where it goes from that, but I know, I know, sort of like that part, yeah. Okay, so, um, I'll let you know, and if you have any you questions, please do, do right. ask, don't be yeah, shy, because yeah. that's yeah. why we're here, right? That's yeah. why we're here. Right, right. So, um, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as you said, he was communicated with the revelation of the Quran uh, through Angel Gabriel, who we believe is the real Holy Spirit. Um, Angel Gabriel is prominent in religions before, such as Christianity is mentioned, in, you know? Right, yeah. So, Angel Gabriel's been around, and he has contact, he has, he has had connections with other prophets before Muhammad as well. Um, Muhammad sallallahu is always referred to as a mercy to mankind, as is the Quran, as is Islam. You know, Islam is for everyone in the world. I mean, the most Muslims in the world are obviously, evidently, they're not going to be in the Arab part of the world either, because the Arab part of the world is not the biggest part of the world. I think there's more Muslims. Is it in China? Is it China? Has Indonesia. Got Indonesia. Indonesia yeah, yeah, yeah. So Indonesia. Indonesia yeah. yeah. The far, far Asian, um, like Malaysia, got, um, India, 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 Bangladesh as well. Bangladesh, and, India. Um, and and Nigeria. Nigeria is also Nigeria, got big. Nigeria, Africa. So. Yeah. Nevertheless, you will find Arabs Islam. are the minority, by the way. Arabs are actually the minority when it comes yeah. to Islam, you know, because I mean, we have a lot of religions in the in the Arab world that are un-Islamic. You know? right. We have like Christians. Christians are quite prominent, for example, in Lebanon. For right, example, yeah. you've got a lot of Christians. Um, Syria, Syria as well. So basically, that part of the world too. Um, so Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, peace be upon him, yeah, Shan. Yeah. So Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a man who came down to basically testify two elements. 
before anything else. Yeah? So there is no deity worthy of worship but Allah right. and Muhammad peace be upon him in brackets himself is the prophet and messenger of Allah. The first part of this shahada, uh, the declaration of faith in fact, um, this is something that you can break it down into two as well. So rejecting all false deities of worship, right. la ilaha and then illallah, accepting your faith in only one true Lord. So I mean, I can... I can make an educated assumption, Aiden, that at least you believe that there is a creator. We do I that, can huh? accept that, yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. So you've got the first part. Then. Right, yeah. um, and then obviously, for yourself, it would be to attain truth. So I mean, have you, have you, have you rejected all of the other scriptures or religions so far, so to speak? Um, I, I wouldn't know that. I wouldn't know for sure. I'd need to just look more into it. If I was to ask you a question, Aiden, like what kind of clarity are you looking for in your heart, in your mind right now, to think, do you know what? This must be the truth. Um, that it condones it. That it is definitely a religion for all of them, all of them. Okay. That would be my plan. Fantastic. Okay, well, I can tell you, Aiden, that we believe as Muslims that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, came down with a universal message to the whole of mankind that Allah does not see someone on a different level to another one of his creation in terms of their in terms of their background as it is obviously God who situated us in the places that we are in today um, may I ask you I just want to go through six points and I just want to ask you what of them you you would think to believe in so far yeah? would you believe that God is one yeah, yeah. would you believe that God has angels uh, I can accept that, yeah. You can accept it accept based it, yeah. upon religious values. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Religious ground, okay. yeah. Could you then, all right, evidently you'll be able to accept that there are prophets and messengers of God yeah, yeah. that bring along with them their scriptures. Right, yeah. And that there will be a day of reckoning including heaven and hell. Uh, Again, I can accept that. Yeah, yeah. Because obviously there must be a purpose for life and then. Right, okay, right? yeah, yeah. And then the last but not least is predestiny, meaning that, for example, the fact that me and you are standing here vocalizing our speech right now yeah. was destined. Right, the people okay. that we meet in our life, the people that we bump into, for example, okay. everything, this is something that came from predestiny. Yeah. It's been okay. written, yeah? Yeah. But um, the, the one that I would just mostly have an issue with, yeah. with, with the ones that you just angels, mentioned. I think. Um, heaven, heaven and hell. Heaven and hell. That's, okay, yeah. Sure. No problem. That's, that's the one that I'm just. Slightly That's fine. I can I can right. respect that as a okay. fellow human being. Yeah. Right. Um, now, would you say? I mean, you've obviously gone through the fact that obviously there are certain miracles in this world that will prove to you the existence of a creator, right? The uh, fact that, for example, the sun is there, the moon right. is there, the sky is up, the ground okay. is down, there's oxygen, etc., etc. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Do you believe that this world has things that science can only come to affirm and not to reject when it comes to the creation of the universe? Uh, right, yeah. Yeah, for yeah. example, that the moon is a reflected light of the sun, for example. Right, yeah. This is something yeah. that, yeah. so Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he's a man that was 1400 years ago professing these, these facts, such as this one, that the moon is a reflected light of the sun. He spoke about the stages of embryology. He spoke about he spoke about many things pertaining to scientific miracles that were only able to bring clarity to a few years ago due to technological equipment that we were able to use to enforce these uh, these scientific truths right. or what they were claims at the time speculations at the time for anyone who wasn't Muslim that didn't believe in the book yeah right yeah so this book is something that we have from 1400 years ago this is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought it to us through the Holy Spirit angel Gabriel yeah okay so could you take it as a as a method method of belief that so for example out of the six pillars of faith that I just told you right there you believed in four of them without a doubt and then right. there are two that you said that it would be basically yeah. conditional upon your acceptance of the actual religion itself. Yeah, yeah, generally, yeah. So, um, your why you came, what, what you're in, what you're in dispute about with the religions is that you want to know that the religion, if you do, God willingly accept a religion, is that it's a religion for the whole of the world. Right. Yeah. So, um, and just to reaffirm, inshallah. Uh, each of these prophets that we spoke about, they were they're sent to their people. So Abraham was sent to his people, Solomon for his people, Moses for his people, Jesus for his people. Even the Christians say that Jesus says, I, I, have sent, I am sent just for the lost sheep of, of Israel. Right, yeah. And then Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent as a mercy to the whole of mankind. So this is what we believe as Muslims. Um, 
the name Muhammad itself is I'm not sure if it is the most common name in this country it yeah. is it is it, it is, is already yeah, yeah, yeah. in this country yeah. and it is also the most common name in the world uh, okay. like globally speaking okay. Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world as well globally speaking okay. and what you were saying about a religion that has Arabized values for example we can say that to be fair Arabs probably hold a very minute population of the Muslim scope than the whole of the world you know right. we can say Indonesia has, has a vast land Malaysia as well so you've got Southeast Asia Far East and etc etc yeah but I mean I, I for myself can stand testament to be someone who doesn't come from a full Arab background it's just my father's Arabic from Bahrain and my mother's from Yorkshire up north she's a river so I'm offspring of a river myself so I mean is there any questions that you have any pre questions that you have about right. Islam first right. yeah yeah so I wanted to know um, what was the religion of Muhammad before he became before okay. he became a prophet Great. and would have the religion that he originally had uh, in, possibly influenced um, okay sure his, his prophecy sure um, Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him he lived in a time in Mecca 1400 years ago where they used to follow statue idols right, yeah? Yeah. so pagan there was a lot of paganism right, yeah. this was part of their economy as well they used to manufacture idols right. one of Muhammad peace be upon him's great ancestors in fact Abraham or Ibrahim peace be upon him his father used to manufacture statue idols and send Abraham as a child to go and sell these idols nevertheless Abraham he was someone that did understand monotheism yeah he had a in his fitra his natural disposition he understood monotheism and he used to challenge this idea yeah as a child so before Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him there was a lot of idol worship they used to have statue idols inside the Kaaba which is the house in Mecca but nevertheless it was Abraham who actually built this house and it was, and it was as an order from the same Lord that spoke through angel Gabriel or the Holy Spirit to Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him and they came with the universal message again which was there's no deity worthy of worship but Allah so first they re rejected and negated uh, any false uh, gods and then they accepted Allah or our God as just being one Lord so to answer your question yeah there was paganism going on you know there was the burial of uh, firstborn baby girls he, yeah he never had really. he never had really. he never had he never followed that yeah yeah he never followed that Muhammad he never followed that himself he used to go and ponder in a mountain yeah in a cave yeah which is called Hira it's in uh, it's in Mecca okay it's just on like it's a mountain there it's still there today and he used to go and ponder to himself about uh, where everything came from and there's actually a there's actually a, a figure of speech or there's actually you know there's a bit of English language that comes from that where they say if you don't bring the mountain to uh, the, the Mecca to, what do they say yeah, if you bring um, uh, the mountain Mecca, uh, Muhammad or Muhammad will go to the mountains. So they like say something. Some, there's, a, there's some kind of uh, speech about the mountain. They say, oh, if the if the mountain doesn't come to Muhammad, yeah, Muhammad right. will go to the mountain. For oh, okay. example, right. yeah. Um, Muhammad used to sit here, peace and blessings be upon him. And this is where Angel Gabriel came to him. He used to go sit there alone on his own in the dark in the cave for hours and hours on end, and he will reflect about life. He, he as as the Sheikh said, he rejected um, their pagan values, their pagan beliefs. Um, and he used to sit there and ponder upon it one day when he was there and this is this is what came to us that an angel came to him and this angel he could see every time he turned his head he could see the angel on every corner of the horizon and the angel spoke to him and the first word that this angel said to him was Iqra read and he said I cannot read and again it said Iqra read yeah yeah, and then he, then it said, "Iqra bismi Rabbik al-ladhi khalaq khalaq al-insana min alaq," and it goes on. Read in the name of your Lord who created you from a single clot of blood, etc., etc., and it goes on. Yeah, right. and we can bring that for you. Yeah. Okay, right. Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, went home shivering, scared. He was with his wife. His wife comforted him, and then slowly, slowly, the revelations of Almighty God started coming to him. And obviously, the main message that came to him that he spread to the whole world as we stand here, 1400 years down the line, is there's no deity worthy of worship but Allah. The Muslims in the time of Muhammad وسلم, from then on until out, out of that, they went from Mecca to Medina to Habash. They went to uh, Palestine and parts of Sham. And then they went to the whole world eventually, you know, we're 1400 years down the line. So I mean, to answer your question, it, racism in our, in our religion is haram. It's not something that we identify as something part of our creed. You know, we reject right. racism. We reject nationality in, in that kind of ideology perspective, yeah, ideological perspective. Okay. If you were to ask someone first, what are you? 
by definition we are um, we are Muslim before we are anything else we are Muslim and this is how we believe that our Lord Allah Almighty will judge us you know and there are three questions that we are asked in the grave and these all pertain to our faith as Muslims it doesn't pertain to our to our um, our history of who we were in the world um, regarding our nationality and culture etc um, obviously there are some certain cultures as a person you can have that don't conflict for example Originally, you're from Southampton, you said, yeah? Yeah, Southampton. Southampton, yeah, yeah. so Alan Shearer, all of that. Down there, yeah? Right, right, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So say, for example, in Southampton, you liked every morning to sit down with a PG tips, two sugars right. and a milk. Okay. You can still do that as a Muslim, right, as long okay. as there's no alcohol in it. Right, okay, do you understand? Yeah. So it's just about making sure that you have in sync your life, as long as it's nothing contradictory with Islam. Okay. So a lot of people, when they come and look for faith, they come to say, oh, so I went to that religion, but I don't like it because they pray five times a day. I don't like that religion because they have to go to a church on Sundays. I don't like that religion because they have to put a red spot on their head. I don't like that religion because they're not allowed to cut their hair. So because these religions don't suit me, I'm not really feeling it. But as Muslims, the, the reason why we believe in the religion as it is and stands today 1400 years down the line and you know what motivates us to come here and, and vocalize our our belief to mature individuals like yourself Aiden right, okay. is that in the Quran there's firstly no contradictions if you go back to even historical texts and values of all of the prophets that were proven prophets and that came before Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him they came with the same universal message again which is that there's no deity of worthy worship but God uh, in the Quran, Allah also challenges um, anyone to find contradictions in the text. 1400 years down the line, we haven't been able to find any contradictions in the text. But, 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 but back, back, back to his question about Arab, 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 was it Arab, Arabization, where, where he was talking uh, about. So Arabization, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the other people so, wouldn't accept it, like the people from Indonesia, Malaysia. If it was that, if that was the case, then they wouldn't accept it, Islam as well. You yeah. know, and there's right, many okay. people that who do accept Islam, like for example, English, English right, person okay. or American. Okay. That doesn't mean that they have to be become an Arab, but it means what it is to learn learn the, the lingua of the Arab, the, the Quran language is better for you to understand right. it more better yeah. and right. it's more okay. beautiful. Ah, okay, so yeah, mashallah, yeah. this yeah. is a point. Yeah. So Allah, our uh, Lord, peace and blessings, uh, peace and blessings, our Prophet, sorry, astaghfirullah, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, received the Quran, the word of Allah, which yeah. is an eternal word, you know, it doesn't have any beginning, just as we believe our Lord Allah doesn't have a beginning. Right. He came down in Arabic yeah. to our Prophet Muhammad. But nevertheless, that does not go to say that the Arabs are favored in religion over anyone else. Okay. For example, there are many scholars to this day and age who are not Arab. Okay. There are a lot of right. scholars. I mean, you could go online, Aiden, and check it out, and you'll see a lot. A lot of Pakistanis. There's a lot. Yeah, yeah. English, English reverts yeah, as well. Yeah. Hamza, Hamza Sotis, he's Hamza Greek, Sotis, yeah. Yeah, yeah, from yeah. Cyprus or Greece. Yes, thank you. So we've got people from all over the world, and they just all come with the same universal message that there's no deity of worthy worship but Allah. I'll also tell you a short story as well. Um, so, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Uh, when he received revelation and he started teaching the Muslims La ilaha illallah or there's no deity worthy of worship but Allah Slowly slowly the leaders of the Quraysh or the tribes in the in Mecca at the time they were catching on to this Their slaves were becoming not disobedient to them But making a distinction between their masters being just their employer should I say so to speak Or someone that has godly values you know The first man who made the adhan or the call to prayer for us as Muslims his name was Bilal he was a slave, he was an African black slave who was freed by instruction of our Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. Money was paid for his release. He was tortured at the time because his, uh, his master, his master, the one that he worked for, he was enslaved to, was ordering him to denounce Muhammad as the Prophet and to denounce Allah as Lord. And he would never do it vocally. He kept on saying, there is only one God, there is only one God and Muhammad is his messenger. Um, it was at this point in torture that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, went and took, uh, gave money basically for his release. And he became our first mu'evin in Islam. He became the first man to vocalize a call to prayer. So you know how, for example, the Christians have the belt, sorry, the Christians have the belt right, yeah, to bring you to church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This man, yeah, yeah. May, uh, may Allah's blessings be upon him always, inshallah, yeah. He vocalized the first call to prayer and he was a black man. So imagine how beautiful that would be and the symbolism behind it. A call to prayer from someone who's not even Arab in the Arab part of the world. 
Okay. So to answer your question in a nutshell, yeah, Islam is not an Arabized religion. Islam is a religion for the whole of mankind. And Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is a man for the whole of mankind, the Prophet for us. And the Quran has been translated for your benefit and my benefit in so many different languages, just for us to grasp and understand the truth that is La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, or there's no deity worthy of worship but Allah. And Muhammad is his messenger. MashaAllah, you see, is that English? So he was, talking, he was talking about hell and uh, hell and heaven. Him accepting yeah. Islam, he's going to be safe. Okay. Explain that to him. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala promises. I need a light. It's yeah. English one, yes. This is an English version of the Quran. Inshallah, Aiden takes it to good use. Inshallah, yeah. the first Quran. You. You're going to be given. Yeah, I'll read it. I'll read it. I'll do my research. Fantastic. I mean, I myself because I don't I don't speak uh, Arabic 100%. Right. So sometimes right. I go to the English uh, translation of the right. Quran yeah. for comprehension. Now, uh, where where are we at? Where are we going to? Bismillah. We are going so, to a restaurant. But can you, do you want to come eat with us after? By the way, we're going to go eat after. All right, yeah, sure. Do you want to join us? Maybe after your yeah, shahada. Sure. Yeah, make sure you join yeah, us, yeah? Oh, got, got tissues, okay. yeah. Um, yeah. Does anyone have tissue? Okay, hello, uh, tissue. Tissue. Uh, shame, shame on you guys. Mohammed. <laughs> <laughs> no one's got tissue. Okay. It's <laughs> not an Arab thing, I promise you. Right. <laughs> See if you want to take a shahada. I'm going to go to it, inshallah. Arab tissue. But anyway, carry on here, but Inshallah. So, mashallah, there. He's got Quran and tissue. I learned in Germany. Um, I can't <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I mean, upon what we've Maybe spoken about, yeah. upon what we've spoken about, um, do you have any further questions that that are in your mind pertaining to our faith as Muslims? Um, so, like. All right, so the, the, the overall goal okay. of Islam. The, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And the English translation of this is, and we, and we, by the way, in brackets, is the majestic plural for Allah. It doesn't mean Allah is plural. Right. He's one. If you translate it, it's, yeah. Right. And we have not created jinn nor man, but for worship. And in brackets, to worship Allah alone as one lord so this is our purpose of existence our purpose of life is to worship our lord alone and then that's when you know that that point we made the fifth point of the six parts of uh right, pillars yeah. of uh, iman of faith yeah day of judgment comes day of reckoning so allah has created us to worship him and we can enter a paradise out of his mercy or we can enter a hell fire out of his uh his retribution punishment system okay yeah um i'll narrate you a short uh, short a little uh, thing for a uh, story inshallah yeah so Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him we know that he was a man that called towards the oneness of Allah he had an uncle who was called Abu Talib now Abu Talib was a man he lived as a pagan or a disbeliever and he died as a pagan disbeliever as well during his life however Aiden he was a man that supported the Prophet um, he was a mediator between him and the leaders of the Quraysh, the leaders of the tribes. Right. Um, he was charitable, he looked after his people, he looked after the people whether they were Muslim or Kufa or, or disbelievers. Right. But on his deathbed, and he saw all of that, but he never accepted Allah as the one true Lord or Muhammad peace be upon him as the messenger of God. So now the truth came to him, but he chose not to accept it. And we know as Muslims, what we believe is that Allah guides whom he pleases and he misguides whom he pleases. I'm sure as a rational person, you can accept that it's God who controls everything. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. So he, a man like him, will never enter paradise because he never accepted Islam when it came to him, the truth. Aidan, I don't know how many times you've listened to someone speak about Islam before and my hat off to you, that, literally my hat off to you, that you've actually, you know, been able to go and do your research on Islam and come here today. Islam compromises of five pillars, yeah? But the first thing primarily is the six pillars of faith and I'll go through them again. So it's the oneness of Allah, the angels of Allah as prophesied before even the Quran and prophesied in the Quran and prophesied in Hadith as well, books basically about the prophets, you know, chain of narration. Right. The messengers, prophets and messengers. So we've got Adam, Abraham, Solomon, David, Moses, Noah, Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, the, the day of judgment, inclu including heaven and hell and uh, predestiny. Yeah, so we've got six pillars of Iman. Okay. Now, see that book that you are yeah. so eloquently holding, yeah? yeah, away from the rain. This book contains miracles inside it, scientific miracles inside it for, from 1400 years ago they just found that out scientists now. were only just able to profess now. I will tell you a couple 
the moon being a reflected light of the sun. This is something that was only scientifically proven very, very recently due to technological advances with their telescopes and etc. It talks about the stages of a woman's embryology. It spe speaks about stuff like that. Recently as well, I actually found it, subhanAllah, not too long ago, in um, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, taught us that when a baby is born, we are to take a smear of a date and smear in the inside of the baby's mouth and this is the sugar of it yeah now i saw on facebook very recently but I, we know facebook lies no problem but anyway there was a scientific study that was done and it came out not by muslims or anything associated with islam that now in hospitals and guys we can go and see for ourselves yeah they are given out like in little capsules a sugar based gel that they are advising the mid midwives to mid, uh, midwives they call to give, encourage to for the, the parents to accept them to get it smeared in the inside of the in the cheek, and this will prevent brain damage. Allahu Akbar. Allah is the most great. This is something that was 1,400 years ago taught to us as Muslims. You know, there are many many scientific uh, miracles contained in this book. This is the same teachings that came from the people before Muhammad peace be upon him, the same prophets, which is there's no deity worthy of worship but Allah. So you know this book. If you can believe that a book is a miraculous book, yeah? Oh, and by the way, just to let you know. Yeah. Sorry, because I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, thank you for your right, patience. Right, I appreciate it. So Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. He came down with certain miracles. Yeah? yeah. Uh, this right, is thank a you, thank you. None right, thank of, you. Muhammad, thank peace you. be upon him, said none of you, you don't do that for me. until you love for your brother or you love for yourself. Yeah? Right. All right. Um, so I should have done it. No, you made me feel bad. Man. This is a thin, <laughs> a thin jacket anyway. Look, I'm shivering like you. I'm a white boy like you. I can tell you. I, I just came from minus 15. MashaAllah. Now he's... <laughs> You should go on t-shirt. Inshallah, Inshallah. Inshallah, Inshallah. Inshallah. Um, so, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, by the way, he said, none of you is a true believer until you love for your brother or you love for yourself. So, evidently, he wants you to be his brother. <laughs> oh, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Inshallah. So, um, where was I going to? What's the? Oh, yes. So, um, this, all of the prophets that came before Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, they came with a universal message. There's no deity where they worship but Allah. The way that people took them seriously, though, and accepted their belief, they had to see something, right? Right? right, you know, to yeah. like affirm that th this word is true. So Jesus, you know, he cured the leper, for example, as we know, he had his certain miracles. Moses, he split the sea. He was able, when Pharaoh challenged him and his magicians challenged him, Pharaoh's snake was turned into a snake that ate the other snakes of the magicians, all by the will of God, you know? So all of the, Solomon, Solomon was able to communicate with the birds. He even had a, a palace or a house, should I say, that was built upon water. That until today, technological advances, we don't know how that, that works out, yeah? We don't know how that works out. No one can build a house on water 1400 years. Well, that's more than 1400 years down the line. And Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, the miracle that he came with is the book that you are holding so eloquently in your hands right now. This is a book that contains no contradictions whatsoever. It's a book that all of us will stand to under rain, under an umbrella and vocalize our faith as believers. You know something, Aidan, that I always say when I come down here? I mean, there are there are brothers listening to me now, like Ali, mashallah, and the Hashim over here. These are guys that I used to listen to on YouTube before I came down here. Yeah, right. I've only been here a few months, but one thing I can say, even though I'm not a professional public speaker, what I come with is certainty in my belief. So it doesn't matter if I'm speaking to, for example, a Christian that has 20 years experience in Speaker's Corner and 30 years experience as a Christian. Right. When we come and bring them truth, the truth stands there. And as we said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we said, he says in Surah al Nisa, verse 82, that he challenges. He challenges uh, the, uh, anyone to find contradictions in his text. So, you know, upon what we've said and the things, could you, would you be able to accept, you do accept that there's one God we know, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you accept all of the prophets before Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, like Jesus, Noah, right, yeah, Moses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And from what we've told you about Prophet Muhammad, you know, coming down with the same, the same thing as all of the prophets before, and he was known by even the disbelievers who fought against him. Yeah, they even admitted that he was truthful and trustworthy, and this is what he was known as. And he came down with the same message to say, there's no deity worthy of worship but Allah. He came with the book that you hold in your hand, yeah? And this book shows scientific miracles that even till today, scientists cannot refute. And there's challenges inside that book again. Once you finish, I just want to address one thing. The brother say, may Allah bless him, yeah? yeah. Uh, say it now, inshallah, bismillah. Yeah, when he talks about scientific miracles, you need to understand something, yeah? We are not basing, we're not using science as a yardstick for the Quran. The reason why I'm mentioning this, I agree with him, it's just something that I want you to know, yeah? Because you might go, because there's now scientists coming and saying, oh, the embryo from, for example, the Quran says, 
the bone, um, if I'm not mistaken, the bone is structured first, then the flesh over it. Now the science is saying otherwise. Now the reason, what I'm saying is the reason I'm mentioning that, what he's saying is right. But science is not a yardstick, do you know what I'm trying to say? Right. The reason why I'm saying that, bro, is because science changes, yeah? Now, we don't base the Qur'an, we see there's scientific miracles, yeah? But, 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 science can come tomorrow and say, for example, Allah says in the Qur'an, we are the ones who, brought, like, expand the universe, for example, yeah? Right. It was one and we, boom. Uh, what happens is, then individuals come and say, hey, science says it's expanding also, they do the interlink, yeah? Now, there's dangers in that. The reason why I'm saying that is so you understand because science can change and I heard it largely they come and say the earth is not expanding anymore so now that might affect you and be like oh hold on a second well now now science is changing does that mean the fault is in the Quran no 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 this, the fault is in science because science changes so don't base your whole faith he's got a point that the, there is scientific miracles in there which the, like the earth for example yeah we can say the earth is in a certain shape uh, 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 yeah it's, it's a certain shape we can see that we can take certain things but we don't base our whole faith on science because science changes they say the earth is flat now they're saying the earth is round they're saying the earth is expanding last year they came and said we don't know if it's expanding yeah so there is those miracles in there but just to let you know i don't want you to go home and say oh look it's, you know because you have these people saying oh scientific miracles refuted and then the brother might have doubts you know what i'm trying to say so we're not saying the book is a, the quran is a book of science it's a book of science just to, just to okay, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Shake my hand, man. Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> oh, sorry, wait, wait, wait. I always do this. One hour later, I'm joking. <laughs> so, um, subhanAllah, what, what Ali said, mashallah, is spot on, yeah? So, I mean, another way to rephrase it, or should I say in addition to that is, inshallah. As Ali said, you know, scientific, uh, or what they say is scientific facts that have come out and they say that they've uh, premeditated it, they've, done, they've gone through their whole hypothesis and everything, then they've said it's truth, for example, and then a few years later, they might come back and say, oh, actually, we were wrong about that. It's the opposite. Yeah, in right. the Quran, there are certain statements made yeah. from then till now and they've never been able to debunk they will not change they will not change and the book is 1400 years old and it's never been it's never been uh, uh, altered would you say that that in itself is a miracle uh, yeah yeah 